Okay, welcome back. We're gonna try a butt joint now with gas metal arc welding or MIG. And one of the main things we're gonna do is we're gonna grab two two inch pieces by four inch pieces uh, or two two inch pieces by six inch pieces. Whatever we've got lying around in the yard. We have some eight inch stuff that I've cut into two four inch strips. And we're gonna take this quarter inch metal and we're gonna place it approximately eighth inch apart or so. I'm going to pick the 3 16th settings. We'll tack it together. We'll go ahead and lay the metal down on our plate, set our gap. And you wanna try and make sure this is nice and flush to each other. So there's our gap right now. You see how we're not quite flush. On this end, I'm going to just take my fingers and bend that to be more flush. Okay. We want this metal to be as flat as possible and as even as possible. It's really similar to when we did our 6010 butt joint on stick welding or SMAW. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it's set up really well. Same thing with this. Now that I've got this tacked and it's flat and an even gap all the way down, I'm going to tack the other side. Tacking the other side is pretty important uh, because the metal will heat up and move on you. Now I will take two scrap pieces of metal and I will lay them again down on my table so that my butt joint is elevated. Because we are trying to jam the wire and the puddle all the way down through this joint, it's pretty important that we don't weld it to the table because that will take you a long time to figure out how to get that weld off your table. Take the time every class period to clean out your nozzle. It only takes a few minutes to clean this out, if that, and it'll keep you from getting any sort of boogers in your weld and also keep things looking good, okay? Make sure you clip the wire before you start to weld. Now when I weld this again, I like to push. If you go into a drag, the energy of your wire is gonna be forced back into the bead in the puddle and it will mound up more than sink down in. So if I push, I can actually drive the puddle and the wire down into the joint. Now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we get full penetration in a single pass from one side. So we're not gonna weld the back side. The idea is that this weld will seep all the way through and fuse the entire joint together. Right now I have it on the 3 16th setting with a eighth inch gap on quarter inch metal. So we're gonna keep our gun pointing straight down and we're gonna start right on the tack. We'll pull the trigger and we just move right down the center of the weld, trying not to favor one side or the other. We don't want a weld pointing to one side or even favoring one side. We wanna be right down the center as we weld. Doing a dry run, seeing how that works. I put one elbow sometimes on the table or in my, on my leg, my thigh, my hip, and I can help prop up as I go down. that's it. Even right here where it looks like it dips down a little bit, it's still fusing to that other side. So all the way down this weld, except for our tacks, we have fusion. Now, for the extra challenge, you grind down your tacks after they're done before you weld it. That way your weld will actually fuse through those tacks. You can see when we warmed up, and I finally got fusion through that plate. This is welded all the way down the thickness. And the front side will be a little bit sunk in. The back side will be completely welded out all the way down and flush. So there's your butt joint 1G, all right? This is flat on the table. Our last assignment will be doing the same thing, but horizontal. So your joint will be propped up and you will be welding across it just like this, all right? But right now, this is our flat butt joint. It's all about keeping it steady, watching the puddle, 
and keeping it nice and smooth, all right? If you keep that wire right down the center and your fit up and your gap is good, shouldn't have a problem. Play with your settings a little bit. If you're finding you're not getting enough penetration into the weld puddle, you can always increase your wire feed. Remember, wire feed is penetration, voltage is the shape of your bead. If your bead's really crowned up, you could always try turning your voltage up. If it's really flat and you want it to be more crowned up, you could turn your voltage down, all right? A wire feed is gonna drive that puddle down into the joint. Go ahead, give this a shot. Two, two inch by four inch pieces or two, two by six inch pieces. You know how to use a tape measure now, so I'm not gonna take anything else but accurately cut metal. our first attempt it looked like it was sinking in pretty good and on the back side not bad but we do have a little bit of a lack of fusion spot right here where we didn't get through we're fusing both sides that's what we want all the way down and then we got a little bit of a stutter right through here but the idea is that we want the idea is we want to have this bead pop through the back side and fuse both edges so overall, not bad. Let's see if we can't try and get a better one. All right, so instead of cutting two new pieces and you want to attempt another one, we can just tack another piece onto the edge of our current weld. So I'm going to just open this up again, about an eighth of an inch. About an eighth of an inch, we take our maybe a pair of pliers or something. We want that plate to be nice and even and nice and consistent across and down it. So now that we have those plates flushed up and I've got about an eighth inch gap, I'm gonna tack it again. All right, again, now I'm going to, as I do this weld, <clears throat> remember to clip the end of that wire off, get a nice clean start. Start on the tack, stay towards the front edge of your leading puddle, and you're really gonna start seeing that puddle sink down in, and you're gonna just try and go. If you go too fast, you'll just blow right through it, and you'll stop welding. So you need to back back up into the puddle, and then keep welding again, and just kind of really try and pull that puddle along, even though we're pushing it. We wanna be at that front edge of the puddle as it's diving down between those plates trying to get fusion all the way. All right, you can see that at the beginning, we were doing really good. And then towards the end, my angle. You wanna make sure that you're focused mostly straight in to push that puddle down and through like you have here. Here, I might've been going a little too fast with maybe too steep of a gun angle. And I started losing the fusion on that top side. All right, so. We had two attempts at it. We, uh, we're getting close, we're doing pretty good, but we're gonna try one more, and instead of getting a third piece, I just took these three pieces I already had welded together, and I cut that middle one in half, right down the center, and I'm gonna tack that up, and we're gonna give it one more go. Keep it nice and flat on the table. After you get it tacked, again, make sure your plates are nice and even. The gap is consistent all the way down, about an eighth of an inch. Tack it, prop it up a little bit so it is not going to weld to the table. All right, again, nice and steady. Clip that wire. And we're gonna go right down the center of it, leading that puddle, trying to be nice and consistent. I'm gonna lean over here, trying to keep my gun angle right. You see how my finger is just propping this gun up. That helps me from having to hold this and suspend it. You can get your hand up here and do the same thing. Whatever it takes to keep this nice and consistent. 